Welcome to Fresh Strike. I'm your host, uh, Ferdinand Violes. And uh, uh, welcome to uh, this show because uh, this is the Filipino Martial Arts Hub for People, Events, Styles, and Techniques. Uh, we would like to start by uh, thanking our sponsors. We have APN, All Play Network, COL, GCash, Tumandok Handicrafts, Ella, Moss, and RSVP Productions for helping us out and making our contents possible. Uh, to start with, I would just like to uh, um, give, no, to because our Sensei Mike, one of our guests before, he is one of the leading grandmasters here in Negros, and uh, he's the head of uh, the Vasquez Modified Tapado Group, and of course, the Vasquez Modified Karate here in Negros. And he would like to extend his deepest uh, sympathies to the family of the Nate, uh, late Nate Defensor. Nate Defensor was a member of our group here, both in Karate and Tapado. And uh, when he immigrated to the States, he was one of the forerunners in the spread of Ernie's in the U.S. And he's also the founder of the Defensor Method of Ernie's. So our deepest sympathies to the families. Uh, of course, we would like to extend our sympathies to the family of uh, the late Randy Alvarado of uh, the Yasai Sabi Group of Bago City. Uh, Randy has been our guest also in episode 7 of First Strike, and he was instrumental of taking Arnie Zimbago to another level, making it popular, and of producing many champions for the city. To our two dear departed brothers, guarantee that you will be always remembered and that your legacy will always be carried on by your students here in the Philippines. So uh, let us pray for their eternal rest. And uh, of course, we also pray for uh, comfort uh, to their families and their loved ones who are left behind. For this episode, we will be dealing with another uh, technique in our knees, no? and uh, this is strangulation. One of the styles that specializes in strangulation is lapu-lapu Vinyas Arnis is one of the oldest schools in the Philippines that specializes in unarmed Arnis. Of course, Lapu-Lapu also has uh, stick fighting, both long and short, and it is a system that lets itself well to both long range, short range, and medium range fighting in Arnis. But one of the uh, virtues of this art is uh, Lapu-Lapu also has techniques that can be used in law enforcement, and this is strangulation. Strangulation techniques are good because they are very, very practical, especially when you are fighting at close quarter distances. When your sticks, uh, when it is no longer very possible for you to hit your opponent with your sticks. So it's either you use a punyo or you use your close quarter sticks like your chin jabs and your elbows and your knees. But of course, Strangulation is also one of the efficient and fast ways to deter, if not stop, aggression on the part of your opponent. So strangulation essentially, before it was a, a technique that was developed to literally uh, knock out your opponent by impeding the flow of oxygen to his brain. No? So you really strangle or you choke him. But nowadays, in the practice of artists, would like to emphasize that uh, we practice it more for its uh, practic uh, cultural cultural application, no? just to keep on uh, practicing what was uh, done before, and of course to maintain uh, the knowledge of these techniques, and we will be able to pass it on to the next generation. And of course, when used as a law enforcement tool, strangulation is also very effective. So in this week's episode, Join us as we showcase to you the strangulation techniques of Lapu-Lapu Vinyas RD. So we will have our first video. Uh, let's, let's do it and uh, let's enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to First Try. In our episode today, we will be showing you the strangulation techniques of Vinyas Lapu-Lapu Arnis. Strangulation techniques before were used to really snuff the life out of the person. 
but with Arnis being accepted as a, a subject in courses in uh, criminology and as a subject in schools, we know how to make it more um, friendly so that uh, humane, so that uh, uh, people will try to appreciate it more for controlling the opponent and just restraining and not necessarily killing your opponent. Now, uh, with the modernization of Arnis, two results came about. Some anisadors uh, devoted their time in developing techniques for sparring and competition in order to make points. While there are also uh, teachers who still try to maintain and develop and as a result make Arnis evolve so that it will become more combative. But for our purposes right now, um, we just want to show you the classical move of Arnis based on the Lapu-Lapu Pina system. Now, what is nice with the Lapu-Lapu Pina system of strangulation is it easily adapts itself for law enforcement purposes. Now, if you want to strangle somebody, you can really use it forcefully and it might be fatal. But for a purpose, it's just uh, for the use so that we can have the compliance of our opponent and it will stop him from doing further aggression. So for now, now let's just uh, remember, uh, in today's episode, we will just be introducing you to the strangulation techniques, mainly for restraining and controlling the opponent. When we come back, we will begin with our strangulation techniques. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we would just like to reiterate, you know, for safety's sake, Again, the main purpose of strangulation nowadays is for restraining and control only, especially for those of our viewers who are engaged in law enforcement or undertaking criminology courses. Be very careful because strangulation might be fatal and it might have human right consequences. So again, let's just proceed with our videos on strangulation. And uh, maybe we can find some techniques here that uh, most of us have forgotten already because strangulation is not uh, practiced much in many of the Arnish schools here in the Philippines. So just to bring you back, a technique which used to be practiced uh, and which used to be very popular, let's go back to our strangulation. In order to execute strangulation techniques, you have to do a series of movements. Uh, in the pulapo, we call it to defend, then to distract the distract. So usually you distract the attention of your opponent, and finally to destroy the defense of your opponent. Now, for example, when Donald strikes, don't strike here. No, it is essential that you should block the strike first. If it's on the other side, you also have to block it. Now, in the pulapo, we prefer to do it close like for example if your opponent strikes again if it's close the power generated by his strikes will be limited because he cannot complete his strikes again on the other side same see here you can control his hands already so it's also essential that you block first because you cannot just strangle your opponent now if you don't block and you go strangle you might get hit and he can do his counter so first you really have to block Strike, so you block, other side, you block again. No? Regardless, if it's going to, to strike low, strike low, no? No? you still block. If it's on the other side, you still block. So, blocking is really essential. In Arnis, this, this is what we call respecting the stick of your opponent. So first, you really have to block. Next, after blocking, that is the defense, after blocking, the next essential element in strangulation is to distract. Now, how can you distract the opponent? Like, for example, if Donald strikes here, strike one. So here is your defense. You can now distract by, like, for example, poking his eye with your stick. Okay, so that is a distraction. If it's on the other side, you can also poke his eye here. Now, when you distract your opponent, this gives you an opportunity, an opening, because the distraction will act, let him react. And from his reaction, that is where you can already execute your technique. So now it's going to be defend, 
and this strap. Now I'll just hit over here so that I won't hit my partner, other side of it. So, there. See, it's fast. Look at this reaction. From there, we can already do our this destruction or our strangulation. Now, other than that, again, don't you strike. Once you distract, you can also use your hands. Like for example, here you block and you distract, you can drive this away and even punch it. You can punch. Okay, if it's on the other side, you can block, you can, okay, so you block. So, so he blocks, you can do this also. And from there, you can do your destruction. And one thing more that we do in Lapu-Lapu is other than hand techniques, we also add leg attacks. Now, because like Donald Trump, please do a forward stance. When you do leg attacks here, you can use your knee or you can use your stump here. Now, when you stump in front, you can break the leg. So, here again, I would like just to emphasize that in a fight, nobody will just extend their arms and give it to you so that they can be uh, disarmed. No, nobody's going to do that in a fight. So in a fight, you really have to do something in your way to divert the attention of your opponent away from his hands. Now, this is what we call destruction. In our video, we showed you that uh, the destruction is usually by king, king the eyes of the opponent. The eyes are very good destruction techniques because, like for example, in a self-defense situation, not sport, in a self-defense situation, if you hit the eyes, you can practically end the fight already. Now, if you think that you are able to end the fight by uh, damaging the eyes of your opponent, well and good. So maybe the next prudent thing for you to do is move away or run away or retreat so that there will be no more uh, bodily injuries for you and your opponent. Now. Okay, of the stick, especially if you're using a sharpened stick or you're using a knife, after the destruction, hitting the eyes, you can also hit the throat, you can also hit the body. I would just like to remind our viewers here that hitting the body with a stick can be a very painful experience. And sometimes people are stuck by just poking their body. So the destruction sometimes is also a fight stopper. Again, if you notice, the the, the the destruction may be a slap, it could be a punch, it could be a poke, it could be an elbow, it could be a lot of things. Remember always, once block, do a destruction technique. Because once you do it, that will give you an opportunity and that is the factor that creates an opening in the defense of your opponent, which will enable you to counter attacks. In our following video, we will be showing you some leg techniques because in Lapu Lapu, we are not only limited to hand techniques or stick techniques. We will show you here that we also do leg techniques, which is another destruction technique that could also prove to be an effective and efficient fight stopper. Let us now go to our next video. We will now show you the continuation of the leg techniques of Lapu Lapu. Now, for example, again, if you want to go stump here, this is what happens. Yes. Now, if you're going to kick here, this is what happens. And if you're going to kick from the inside, this is what happens. Okay? Or if it's in the back, that is what happens. So essentially, you destroy the knee of your opponent. Now, what is nice when you do all this all together, you overwhelm the capacity of your opponent to think. So again, so you, you do a strap, then you do a, a distraction, or a distraction here, then you do your strangulation and follow up with a knee. Technique there. And from there, maybe you can have, maybe you can have the compliance of your opponent. Now what we're doing, what we're doing here today now is the traditional or the classic strangulation. So we would encourage our viewers that based on these techniques, you also try to develop your strangulation techniques. Now, what we're going to show you are the different defenses that we transition to strangulation so that you will be able to defend yourself either from the left side or the 
right side. Again, remember our main goal is not to kill our opponent but just to control and restrain. When we come back, we will show you the individual techniques of lapu-lapu strangulation. Again, we just showed you the uh, leg techniques. In lapu-lapu, leg techniques are really integral to our defense. Because uh, if you notice, many, many, many practitioners now disregard the use of the legs or the sikarat aspect of our music. But sikarat is very much a part of lapu-lapu. Now, in lapu-lapu, the kicks are very low. And most of them are, are tied to the knee or to the chin to stamp the feet themselves. Now, the knee, it takes about only 20 pounds to break the knee. Regardless whether you attack the front, the side, or the back, the knee is a weak point. Usually, when you attack, people will be concerned defending their upper body, their face, their chest, okay, or maybe their torso. I've uh, experienced most of the time when I do this, uh, I ask people, when I demonstrate, okay, can you please defend, usually in a sparring technique. And uh, we found out in our practices and or in sparring, that every time we attack, usually one of the most neglected part, which is uh, undefended, are the legs. So here, uh, we found out that if we attack the legs simultaneously, people are only um, busy about thinking the upper, uh, thinking of defending the upper body. So attacking the leg usually is not uh, realized by your opponent until it's too late. In a real fight, the main goal in attacking the leg is to really break the knee. Again, it only takes about 20 pounds to break the leg. My, my uh, preferred style is to not to kick because sometimes when you kick, there's a tendency for your, for your foot to slip either to the left side or the right side. When you stamp it sideways like this no, or a side kick, it has a larger surface area in missing the, the, the knee of a... Uh, uh, opponent is very unlikely. And of course, the force of the stump, stumping kick, or the side kick is very powerful. As a matter of fact, if you really do it hard, stumping kick is not painful to execute. It is very easy to execute. It doesn't need much stretching. And definitely, it is a very powerful technique. Let us now proceed to our next video. We will now show you the first strangulation technique of lapu lapu, this time it is coming from the side again. Don't slowly strike, so it's coming from the side. Okay, first we will show it to you in real time so that you will see how it is applied in actual situation. We we'll try to do it fast, but for our students again or for our watchers, we recommend you do it slowly until you master the techniques. Again, defend destruction and destruction of your opponent. I will not hit Donald with my punyo, but you will see the techniques there. I will just stop it short of hitting him so that you will see how it is applied. So we will now show you strangulation number one of lapu-lapu. Okay, Don, ready? Go! Again. Okay, so that is the destruction, okay? Again, you do it from this side, Don. Ready? Go. So this is the destruction. Here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit his head. Again, done from there. Again. So, hack, hit, then you tap this one. And you strike. Very important. Okay? Now, look at his body position, which is already there. Even from this angle, I can already do a stamping here. But I will have to couple it with a stamping. Do it slowly again. So for your benefit, you try to do it slowly. One, then you do a hit the eye. You really hit. Really show the intention that you hit the side. If he blocks, then you block. If he blocks, you block. You tap the sun. There, you already have the angle. Then you can step here and you try to struggle here. Now, in order. 
good thing in here. I can just show you. Look at what happens. Hold, hold my stick. Hold your stick. Watch. See? He will already fall down. He'll do it slowly three times. That's what he So one, two, top hard. And strike. Then strangulation. Or from there, you can do your leg attack. Again, slowly. One, two, start and hit or put you. Then you do your strangulation and your strike. Now, take it from the other side. Do the strike here. So look at the angle. There. If he blocks, you block. You move in. Or you do a punyo. And you do a strangulation. There. Okay. So there you have, folks. Our first strangulation of lapu-lapu. So if you notice in the techniques, the strangulation actually is more of a finishing technique. What I like there is in the use of the punyo or the base of the stick. The punyo is a very powerful technique, especially if it is directed to the temple, to the eyes, to the philtrum, to the mouth, wherein you might be able to destroy the teeth, the throat, or the chest. The punyo is a very powerful technique. Um, I always tell my students, you practice this technique, you have to practice it slowly until it becomes second to nature. When you are new to these techniques, you'll find and maybe you'll, see, you'll think that, wow, this is too slow or this is too complex. Actually, strangulation can be effective if you have an effective distraction technique. Because if there is no distraction, this is what I've been telling my students, no distraction, there will be no disarming, there will be no strangulation. So essentially, whether you're blocking, you must make it second to nature. Second to nature. Again, one of the best way is to hit the eyes or maybe to slap the face. The, 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 eye, the head area is a very good target, especially in distraction, because it really disorients your opponent. You don't have to knock him down. Of course, if you think after punching you knock him out, well and good. But if you just slap him and you have him disoriented, that will open him for a follow-up. Again, when you practice, you practice it slowly, slowly at first, and be very careful. I've had students in the punyo or in their distraction technique there, the distraction stage, uh, if you're not careful, if you do not have uh, helmets or if you do not have control, you might be able to hit the eye. Now, in practice, you really have to hit the head. That, that is your target. But then again, care or caution should be exercised because you might hit the eye of your training partner. It is only through repetition and drills. Now, some people might not really believe in this. They say, uh, they say this drill is too programmed. Now, this is unrealistic. Actually, if you try it in Lapu-Lapu, if you want to effect good defense in Lapu-Lapu mindset, it is trying to go near. You should have a very close quarter uh, distance of fighting. That is the principle of Lapu-Lapu. One, if the distance is short, the fulcrum or the centrif centrifugal force of the stick will be lessened and it is less painful. Second, if you're very near, it is easy to predict the movements or the counter moves of your opponent. Now, if you do your distraction, you will have essentially multiple distraction options. You have the upper, middle, lower. So what I suggest is you do simultaneous. Upper and lower simultaneous. When you say upper, attack to the eyes or to the head. Simultaneous, attack to the knee. So that was our first technique. It's a, it is just simply a choking technique wherein you go behind your opponent. The knee is very important because when you put your knee at the back of your opponent and you put your stick here at his throat, he will lean back. And it is easy to knock him down. Once you knock your opponent down, you do additional uh, Irish tactics. Maybe you can hit him with your stick, or maybe you can give him attacks using your legs or your hands, or maybe compliance techniques. Now, uh, one of my techniques is don't really go too much on wrestling. You can have 
uh, you you can have compliance by threatening to inflict more damage using the stick by hitting your opponent doesn't give in. Now you tell him, okay, if you don't give in, I will give more strikes. It's up to you. So that is one of your bargaining. Okay, so let us now let's now proceed to our next strangulation technique. So essentially, what we'll be showing you are blocking and strangulation techniques from both the left and right side. We will give you six or seven, depending on uh, the time we have. But for now, we will now try to block strangle and strangle, strangulate our our opponent if he's trying to. Hit me here on the other side, right? Hit me here. So there, from this angle. Right? Earlier, you blocked from this angle. This time, you blocked from this angle. Now, it is important that you really have to block and move at an angle. Because if the strike is very powerful, you might not be able to absorb it. So again, the opponent strike here, you move here. Okay? Again, one. You move here or you strike. Look at my hand. It's already a lock there. Because, don't try to, to push your hand down and see. You cannot move. So this is your lock. Okay? Now, I'll do it again two times. No? Very fast. Then we will break it down for you. Okay, don't strike. Bang! See? There. Again, I'll do it now. The whole routine. Okay? It's very fast. It's very fast. Ready? Go. Back. Back. There. See? This is a neck lock. From here you can throw or you can step here or you can also move from under his arm. Okay? This is what I just did. So only one, right, and look at this. And I step here. Okay? The other variation is if I do it under. Again, slowly. There. This time it's under the arm. We will come back. I will show you how to do it. Okay. okay. So that is the real-time application of the strang second strangulation. Now, again, I would just like to reiterate. The first one was for attacks coming from your left. Huh? It, it was uh, coming from your left. The second one are defense for attacks coming from your right. Okay, there is a transition. I want you to look at the position of the hands as I transfer my stick, no? There is a transfer there. Once I block, I put my hand here. So they're close to each other. That is where I transition and I transfer the stick. Again, now there is an insult there when I do this, no? It's like a ridge hand. When you try to go for a, for a neck lock here, this one is still a strike. You strike him with your forearm, or you strike him with your upper arm, or you strike him with your shoulder. I would prefer the lower or the underarm technique because it is more secure and it renders his stick hand useless. So it's like being locked here from the underarm. The arm of the opponent is over here. It's locked on the neck. Now, when you do this to your opponent, he is rendered uh, inutile because he cannot move. Uh, the ridge hand technique, the transition is very important. So here in Lapu-Lapu, again I said, we do a lot of things in the same time, at the same time. So you do the destruction, the destruction, even the transition is a hit. Now, they won't even notice that there are like techniques already being done. In this time, instead of stumping, I move behind the back and motion myself for a throw. Now, a throw is a sudden movement that will easily disorient your opponent and it will also open him to more attacks. Okay, let us now proceed to the breakdown of technique number two coming from the right side. We will now break down for you the two angles or the two uh, types of attacks when black again strike to the side. Okay, again, slowly. One, this is your defense. This is your distractions. Then you hit him with your arm. Bam! Bam! From here, again, you can do stumping here and you can step. Pull like that. OK? 
Okay, again slowly. One, two, and again, two more. One, bang! Last one. Again, moving. There. This is above the armpit. I will now show you under the armpit. So from here, this traction here, right here. And below the armpit out. Again, you can do your leg here. But this time, you put armpit and you lock down here. See, even this hat cannot hit anymore. I'll do it three times slowly. Again, so I got one bang under. Okay, first time is time. Go. Bang. That's one. Bang. Under. Step and strangle it. Okay, those are the techniques for strangle number two. Okay, one of my favorite techniques when I do it is I really charge towards my opponent. Sometimes even without using your stick and if you charge head on, it can also create some panic or destabilization on your opponent. Now, the underarm technique is very effective. Actually, I, what, actually what I did in strangulation number two is in what uh, most law enforcement circles call as a sleeper hold. So essentially, put your, you, you put your opponent's neck over here. So your upper arm and your, uh, your, your, your forearm are the ones that uh, lock both the carotid arteries of the neck of your opponent. And if it's really very tight, it'll take only about maybe three to seven seconds and it can render your opponent unconscious. Again, the ridge hand should be part the technique, the elbow should be part of the technique. If you have time again to watch this uh, episode and uh, try to dissect the te these techniques, I would like to emphasize the hand and the leg technique should go simultaneously. The key then is overwhelming your opponent's capability to react rationally or to put up a reliable or effective fence because he can no longer do that because he is overwhelmed. For the destruction, if you would like to do multiple strikes of your sticks, go ahead. It's okay. There's no limit to it. What we're showing you here again are classical techniques. And again, we would like to emphasize we encourage our viewers if you want to do or make variations out of it. Go ahead, and perhaps later on, you can share it with us here at First Try. Okay, let us now go to our next video. We are now going to show you strangulation number three of Lapu Lapu Venus Aries. Now, number three is a little bit complicated. It is more of an advanced technique, but we'll still show it to you, to you step by step. No, and it is a, it's a very advanced and very complex, but it will certainly overwhelm your opponent's defenses. Now, number three actually is uh, was designed in case that you're doing like this when you're attacked. So you're holding your hands and you are not prepared. So essentially, somebody tried to attack you from your left side again. Don't you strike? So essentially, you attack there and you're doing this. You're not in a fighting stance. You see, there are instances that you're just holding your hand and you're, you're king. So when somebody tries to attack you from there, again, don't strike, you just cover like this. Now this is our, we call it, hold hands technique. Actually, for this army, it's a fast technique. Like for example, step two, two times, one. Watch that. Yeah. Okay, again, one, strike. Okay, again, strike. Bang! Bang. Okay, it's a fast technique. I'll do it fast. Okay, strike. Come, come. Again, two more. Two. See? Very fast technique. Now, if you just, if you don't want to disarm, you can just do this again. So you disarm and stop. Okay? You can just stop. But there is a technique for strangulation adapting using technique number three. Okay, in technique number three, uh, 
we will show you. But when you practice, please practice with your students slowly. Because there is a tendency that they might break their elbow, they might break their neck, or they might break their back. So, for your purposes also, those who are interested to practice this move, uh, the defender will be the active and the one who is attacking. During the defense, it should be passive. So, when we practice this, I tell you that don't just throw the force because we're doing it slowly. Now, we're going to do it fast first, no? but uh, during the stimulation, I will just do it slowly so that I will not harm my partner. Because there is really a very big tendency that he might break his arms, his back, or his neck. Okay? Yeah. Now, for example, strikes. There. The pull you can be used as your destruction. Now, for example, when I block, oh, you block one. If he blocks there, I go here. Okay? Now, if he doesn't block, I will still go here. And maybe I can strike him or stab him. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Okay? Again, don't strike. There and stop and stop. Okay? From here, you watch. I'm going to hit this with my elbow. Bam! I really want to bend this elbow. Take talk. There is a control here. I bend the elbow. There. Then I bring it out and around. Like that. And I strangle him from here. Okay, a bit slowly. Okay. Again, so from here, watch. Watch the transition of this hand and this hand. There, see? This one removes the stick, this one holds the hand. This is the destruction. There. Okay? Now, if he blocks, you block dot. I can still do it here. And from there, I play the elbow. Out and lock. Okay? We'll do it five times so that you can do it slowly. Again, this is the defense. You have a destruction here. Then you disarm. This one gets rid of your opponent's stick. This one holds your opponent's hand. Another destruction or here. If he blocks, you block on. You just do a punio. Remember this hold. Do not let go of this hand. Then you break this elbow. And you step at the tango here. Look at what happens when you step at the tango. See? Yeah, I break this arm. And I struggle it. Okay. Three more times. And it's going. Okay. One. Two. Destruction. Repeat. Break the elbow. Destruction already. And strangulation. Okay, two more. Actually, again, even when Master Donald and I practice, okay, we practice it slowly. And uh, if ever you want to do it fast, you just do it a little faster, and he becomes a passive receiver of the attack. Because this technique is really very dangerous. Actually, you don't have to even to, if you're really good at it, the stabbing and the breaking the elbow will suffice. But this one will take it a step further. So again, we'll do it two more times. This time, very slowly, so that you can do it. Strike, so you block, block. When you block, don't block from afar. Because the opponent's attack will be very strong. You try to move in. There. So that you limit his attack. And you can do a pull you there. And a disarm. Disarm. Strike here or strike there. Okay, look at this hand. And I do a arm. Take note, I go behind Master Donald. That's done. Okay, slowly. One. Now, I want you to watch carefully the transition when I hold this hand, his weapon hand. Okay? Watch. See, I don't let go of his hand, I go here. This one goes to the back, this one goes in front. This one goes in that direction, this one goes in that direction. So it's essentially like this. See, that is how I hold his hand. 
Can you just stop? Maybe multiple times. A strike to the head. You distract. Then you break the elbow here. When you do this, you know you're fine. You take it real hard, real strong, so that here you can already break the elbow and have compliance. So break and twist the body, and then you have your strangulation. Okay? So, thank you, Master Donald. When we come back, we will show you strangulation number four. So, there you are, that's strangulation number three. Actually, in strangulation number three, we don't show the leg techniques anymore because it's kind of dangerous. Because uh, if you see the, the body of Master Donald Loro was already twisted, his hand was twisted, his neck is twisted. So, there are many locks there already from the elbow to the shoulder to the neck. Now, once you have locked him, you can do additional punyos depending if your opponent or cooperated or not. But then again, in a real fight, you can do your leg techniques there. In number three, it takes time to master number three. But then again, you can always replay here the techniques that you saw in All Play Network first strike. And in this episode, you can keep on playing it back, playing it back, all our techniques here. Again, before we proceed, we would just like to thank our sponsors again, All Play Network, Sea Oil, GCAS, Tumando, Ella, Moss, and RSVP Productions. Okay, let's just go back to our discussion. In number three, um, actually, it's very easy because once you hit your elbow at the top of your opponent's hands, his hands will be bent and his uh, body will already be twisted. So, even there, even if you have only initiated your strangulation, already do as much damage as you can. But of course, when practicing exercise spots caution, that is always a cardinal rule in our knees. Again, if you don't want to do a, an elbow here, you can do a put you, or if you block, you can still do your traditional or classic destruction techniques. Your, your, only your imagination will limit the techniques that you can do with these techniques. Okay, now again, I would like you to remember that the techniques that we're doing in this episode, we're doing it first left, then right, then left, then right. Now, not all techniques can be done on the left and right, no, on the left and right side. So it is best that when you study this, you study all the techniques for the left side, you study all techniques for the right side until they become instinctive. Now, when I teach them, uh, first, I teach them uh, left, number one, right, number two, left, number three, right, number four. I'll do it slowly. Then after that, I give my students unpredictable slow strikes. So if I strike, uh, strike uh, from the right, maybe you can execute strangulation two and four. If I strike from the left, you can do strangulation one and three. Now, in Lapu-Lapu, we have around eight strikes. Now, for this episode, we will only be dealing with four strangulations. That's why follow us next week because we will be giving you all, all the strangulation techniques of Pinas Lapu-Lapu Arnis. Again, we have many strikes. By the way, when you say strangulation, don't uh, get us wrong because it is just more for convenience that under this group of techniques, strangulation, there are also some uh, restraining techniques which are not necessarily strangulation, but we put them under the strangulation techniques because these are control and compliance techniques, and we usually do this for uh, reference, especially when we are teaching the police or our law enforcement uh, force multipliers, or we have uh, what we call the tanods here or barangay tanods. And sometimes we even teach us to uh, uh, what we call them uh, uh, auxiliary, auxiliary armed forces personnel. So strangulation is also a resting technique. Now, uh, for uh, our brothers who are force multipliers of the armed forces, this is good, especially for night watchmen, wherein uh, the use of firearms or the use of uh, Heavy-handed techniques is uh, prohibited. 
Restraining and strangulation usually is enough to get compliance from violators. Okay, let us now proceed to our next technique, which is the garrote. So far, we have shown you the strangulation coming from the left. We have already shown you two strangulation. And now, we are going to show you one more time. Uh, anyway, in our next episodes, we will show you four more. But since uh, this is the only time that is permitted us, we will show you one of the last strangulation. This is called the garrote. Garrote because, you know, essentially it's a cross-arm strangulation. It is a very effective technique. And if you try to do it efficiently or correctly, it is a very, very painful uh, technique for the opponent. So, this kind of defense is four strikes coming again, this time from the right, okay? Essentially, still block. Again, remember, defense, destruction, and destruction of the opponent. Always remember that. And then, of course, do not forget, before we, we wrap up later on, always use this one. Now, again, I would just like to remind everybody, again, if you think you have a difficult time trying to strangulate your opponent, go straight for the leg. Break the knee. Or again, like this. Touch. See? Look at that. See? You can already break your opponent down. Or here. See? You can already break his leg here. That's why do not forget the leg attacks. Now, this is my basic. You block, you attack, there, there, or here. Okay? You can already stop the fight from this point already. You don't have to strangulate. But if you really want to control the person and you need to strangle him, this is how you do it. This is the goal. Okay. One, you strike to the eyes. Okay? Then at this juncture, you transfer your hand. Here. No? It looks slow and you go to the side and strangulate. Okay? Okay, I'll show you. Fast. One, ha! You see? That is how fast you can do it. You can do it fast if you want to. Okay? Just watch the transition. One, you block and you distract. You can break the hands here if you want. From here you can already break. See? You can break the arms, you can break the knee. You can do a lot of things at this angle. Okay? Or you can do this. There. You punch him there, that is your destruction. You push this, that is your transition, and you go to the back. Okay, that is your garrote. Now, garrote is one of the very beautiful techniques of lapu lapu. <coughs> anyway, we're going to do three fast, and we're going to do three slow so that you will be able to follow it. Hold on, one, Bam! go, and Strangulate. Again. You can stop and strangulate or you can step there. One more time. And there and strangulate. Okay. We do it very slowly now so that we can break it down. One, you block your destruction to there or here. You stop. Hold. This one can see here the opponent. See? And strangulation. Stay here at the back. Please hold the kingdom. Hold the kingdom. Because you can pull your opponent. Okay? Again. One. There. You can do a hammer strike. Then you can do a knee destruction. Again. Strangulation. Remember upper and lower body attack all at the same time so that you can overwhelm your opponent's defense again slowly so one so the basic is just like this strike transition strike hold and then okay one pass bang again bang Our strangulation number four 
of Lapu-Lapu Vinyas Islands. So, there you have it, folks. Again, she said, the four strangulation techniques of Lapu-Lapu. Now, in order just to wrap it up, always remember the principle of up, down, no? And in training, remember to do it very, very slowly. Don't do it fast. Have patience. Okay, if we are training in earnest, what I would suggest is do sparring. Do sparring and you do the drills, whatever it is you do. But you should uh, allot a special time, especially for strangulation. And of course, uh, it would be very good to teach this especially for ladies because strangulation is an effective technique, especially for women's self-defense. It, it is a fast type and it is very lethal. Of course, we do not want to talk about killing people here. It's just more, again, for compliance and control. So, again, uh, do it slowly. Do it slowly. Repetitions. Now, in my class, usually I do them in a, in a one hour class. My typical schedule is, uh, of course, we do warm up. Warm up. And after that, I do sparring. Now, some people might ask me, why does the sparring come first? Now, I want to do the sparring. I want to do the sparring first in class because sometimes when you do drills first, by the time that you put the sparring at the end of your class, most of the students are already tired and exhausted. So they cannot exhibit the, the potential of their moves when they spar. And there is not much... Uh, Attention or much uh, energy left for them to do various attacks and defense. Okay, so I would like to encourage our brothers in the Filipino martial arts to please again try to watch our episode on strangulation. Uh, we will have four more next week, which we will share with you. And uh, it would be nice if you try to study this episode. Please again, you know, here in a uh, play network it's not only a talk show actually it's it could be an instructional show so we would like to showcase here techniques and strangulation is one of them so i would really like to encourage our brothers in the filipino martial arts community to please continue teaching this i hope that uh, with the show here in all play network we can also try to discover techniques which might, in some cases, have been forgotten already. And from the moves that we've done here, we encourage you to make uh, modifications. Because, you know, it is through modifications that uh, we will be able to further our knowledge. Because there might be some things that I do that I have not really thought of in your practice to be able to develop or even improve upon. So here, uh, next week, we will add four more techniques. These are nice techniques, no? And uh, with that, I hope that you will be able to develop it. So again, we would like to thank our sponsors, All Play Network, Sea Oil, Gcash, Commandot, Ella, Moth, and RSVP. So next week, please uh, try to... Uh, uh, wait for us and try to uh, have a, watch our episodes. No? We will have more techniques. As a matter of fact, we will gather more techniques from more masters here and we will try to share it with you. Next week, we will have another grandmaster who will serve as my co host, the uh, grandmaster Bongo Borbano. He's also one of the leading grandmasters here in Negros and I think he is part of the Bati group of Anisadors. And uh, for now, we will have uh, uh, Dr. Motika because he's uh, changed his schedule and he has some commitments on Saturday, so he won't be able to be with us. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, we will wrap up our show for now. I hope you try to play back everything that we've shown you in this episode, study them well, and of course, improve on them. Until then, this has been your host, Ferdinand Bobot Cayole, saying goodbye. And mag-adis tayo. Oh, before we leave, we would like also to thank our staff in All Play Network. Thank you for making this show possible. Thank you very much, our sponsors and our viewers. Until then, it's goodbye, and I'll see you next week. Bye.